Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is Digital One ET121. Today we're going to discuss using Carnot maps. Remember, our Carnot map is a systemized mean of minimizing our logic expressions. Why minimize? Well, basically there's less gates, less power consumption, less interconnections. It's cheaper. Long story short, less chance of screwing it up. Um, so we're going to use a Carnot map today for some of products minimization. Basically, all you do is place ones on your Carnot map where the products are equal, the product terms are equal to one. So given this expression right here, we are going to go ahead and map it. So first off, is it a standard SOP form? Well, yes, it is. All variables in the domain are present in each product, the domain being A, B, and C. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and map it. So let's go ahead and make our little three variable Carnot map. Okay, again, pay attention to this thing right here. Our order goes from 1, 1 to 1, 0. Okay, so we've got a not A and B, C. So that sounds like it's 0, 1, 1. Where do we find it? It's right here, 0, 1, 1. Okay, A, not B, C. So it sounds like a 1, 0, 1. Where is it? Right there. Okay, the next guy is 1, 0, 0. Where do you find him? Right there. Okay, the rest of them are zeros, but just go ahead and leave them off for now. Okay, so that's for a three variable. Let's try a four variable. And let's say we've got an expression x is equal to, oh, geez, this is going to be a long one. Let's do this. Try that on for size. So it looks like you've got a not A and B and C and not D, or A, B, C, not D, or A, B, not C, not D, or A, B, C, D. So let's go ahead and make our four variable Carnot map right here. So there's our four variable Carnot map, and it looks like our first term is going to be 0, 1, 1, 0. So 0, 1, 1, 1, 0 goes right there. Our second term is going to be three ones and a zero. So it sounds like that's going to put right there. Our, our third term, one, one, zero, zero, right there. And our last term is just all ones right there. Pretty simple, huh? So that's just, that is mapping, excuse me, uh, basically mapping our expression to our Carnot maps. But now, what if we get a non-standard expression? Let's say z is equal to b and c, or not a, not c. So our domain is a, b, c. But we've only got an, a b, c term and an a, c term. So the first term is missing our a. Our second term is missing our b. So we can go back and do the old a or not a times b and c, I, should, I said times, I shouldn't say times, I should say and. And we could also do the, to get our b term, back in this one right here, is and, not a, not c. So we can do that. That's, to, that's totally, totally, you can totally do that. We've already had a lecture about that, but you can also use this technique called numeric expansion to include all possible cases. So what numeric expansion is? Expansion. If you think about it, let's just take our first term. B and C. It's going to be a 1 and a 1 there. But A can take any value from 0 to 1. So if you think about it, we can have 0, 1, 1 or 1, 1, 1, 1. Wait a second. I think that's too many ones. One, one, one. Okay. Second term is not a, not c. So that's a zero, and that's a zero. B, however, could take any term from zero or one. So if we think about this, zero, 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 one, zero. So what we need to map out is this and this. So let's put our three variable Carnot map together. So it looks like 0, 1, 1. So it's going to be right there. 
triple one right there, triple zero right there, zero one zero right there. Pretty cool, huh? Now let's try that with this four variable expression not expressed in standard sum of products form. Okay, here you go. So you've got A or not C D or A C not D or not A B C not D. So again, what's our domain? It's A B C D, and there's a bunch of a uh, bunch of these terms here missing in it. So the first one, A, using numeric expansion. It's got to be 1, but B, C, and D can take any value like this, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and so on, and so forth. So all these guys are going to be 1s. And now this guy right here. That was that. So we've got a not C, D. It has to be 0, 1. But A and B can take any form 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And all these ones are going to be put on the Carnot map with 1s. Notice that there's some overlap right here and right here. Don't worry about that. OK, A, C, D. A, C, excuse me, not D. So that's got to be 1, 1, 0. But B can take any form between 0 and 1. So we just go ahead and put 1, 0, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1, 0 onto the Carnot map. But we find they're already there, right here and right here. Don't worry about that. OK, the last guy, he's got all four terms. It looks like 0, 1, 1, 0. There you go. OK, so that is how to map non-standard sum of products expressions onto a Carnot map. OK, as we said, the whole purpose of a Carnot map is to minimize our resulting logic expression. So for minimization, there's three steps. Basically, we've got to group our ones. So I'll write them down here. Minimization. There's three steps. Number one, group our ones. Number two is determine the group product term. Three, again, we're doing sum of products, so sum the results. Okay, the first step there, grouping ones. Let's talk about that one in a little more detail. OK, so the rule is maximize the size of the group, minimize the number of groups.